If you haven't seen yesterday's video yet, I suggest you go watch it first because it is in that lesson that I lay the groundwork for where we're going in this teaching series. But to recap, for those of you who have seen it, yesterday we talked about the sealed scroll that God is holding in his hand in the book of Revelation and how it was only the crucified and resurrected lamb that was able to take the scroll and begin to break open, open its seals and open up the scroll. Now, while many are terrified of the book of Revelation and what takes place in it, we learned yesterday that opening the scroll represents something of infinite value, that it is the beginning of the revelation of God's hidden glory to those who live in heaven and on earth. We also learned that Jesus was the way that God was going to put this revelation on display, that it was only through him that we get to see that part of God who is willing to stoop down to wash the feet of one who's about to betray him. It's only through Jesus that we get to see Almighty God who's willing to lay down his life in a torturous death and as he's dying, extend forgiveness to the people who are killing him. I think we may have grown so accustomed to this that we really don't realize how profound it is. But the angels in heaven are astounded by this revelation. This is the part of God's glory that they had never seen before. This is why we are told in 1 Peter 1.12 that the angels long to look into these things. We refer to this self-sacrificial work of Jesus, demonstrated in his life and death, as the revelation of the Lamb. And looking at scriptures in Ephesians, we discovered this path that Jesus walked, this journey he took that showed off God's glory, is something that God's people, the church, are supposed to embrace as well. So today we will begin to explore this path further and start to learn how we can join in with Jesus in demonstrating this powerful testimony to the glory of God. But first, we will look back into biblical history to see how this revelation is something that God had been working on for a very long time, uh, even before Jesus was born. Today we will look to see how Abraham walked out a journey with God that led him to become an early example of this revelation of the Lamb. There's great significance that the people charged with carrying out the task of putting God's glory on display, the church, are also declared in Galatians 3.29 to be Abraham's seed. If you grew up in church, you probably sang the song about Father Abraham having many sons and how I'm one of them and so are you. It was a cute song, but according to the New Testament, it is also sound theology. If we are followers of Christ... We are the spiritual descendants of Abraham, the father of our faith. So it should not seem strange that it was Abraham that it was in Abraham that God first put the revelation of the Lamb on display. Over 4,000 years ago, when Abraham lived with his family in Mesopotamia in a city called Ur that was filled with idol worship, God called him to step out in faith and to head off into a land that would one day belong to him and his descendants. God entered into covenant with Abraham, promising him that he would be with him on his journey every step of the way. So Abraham packed his bags, took his family, and headed out, having nothing more to go on than his faith and his covenant with God. Along the way, Abraham was empowered through his relationship with God to walk out the revelation of the Lamb even before the Lamb came to earth. Abraham was the model in which God demonstrated his ability to accomplish what he longed to create in humanity from the very beginning. That is, a people totally yielded and surrendered to him, walking with him in intimate, united relationship where the two become one. Then together, God and the men and women of the earth would advance his kingdom throughout all of creation, putting his glory on display in infinite ways. This had been God's plan from the beginning. So let's look a little more closely at the journey that Abraham and God took together. Paul refers to Abraham in Romans 4.20 as being strong in faith. But he didn't start out that way. True, he did show great trust by packing up his family and heading out to a place that he really didn't know anything about based only on God's promise. However, there were several times along the way that Abraham appeared to be more strong in fear than strong in faith. After all, at two different times, he was willing to give up his wife in order to protect his own life, 
Genesis 12, Genesis 20. But who can forget his great undertaking to, to help God by laying with Hagar to produce Ishmael, all because he didn't trust that God would keep his promise to provide an heir. And that's in Genesis 16. However, none of Abraham's failures led God to break his covenant, his promise. He continued to walk with Abraham through the various stages in his life, even when he failed. And over time, the man who God would end up calling my friend went from being a fearful idolater to a man who had total confidence in his relationship with God. The reality of God's faithful character became so real to Abraham that when God told him to take his son, Isaac, the son of promise, to the top of Mount Moriah and offer him up as a sacrifice, he proceeded to obey without hesitation. Just the fact that Isaac was his son would have made this challenging enough. But Isaac was the son of promise, God's fulfillment of his word to Abraham that he would have an heir through his wife, Sarah. His entire life's purpose and destiny was caught up in the boy's life. But we get no indication that Abraham even hesitated or asked a question when the command came. He immediately did what he was told. This place of complete trust and obedience is what God was looking for when he made humanity. It was what Adam and Eve had been designed for. But they had barely started to walk toward it before giving it up. But God didn't give up. He was still committed to it. And Abraham demonstrated it was possible. And of course, we know the end of the story. God intervened, and Abraham did not have to sacrifice his son. But in the process, all of heaven got to see what it looks like for a fallen human being to rise up through relationship with God and become totally obedient. Abraham is the first illustration we see of the journey that humanity is designed for, what we might call, again, the way of the Lamb. Through friendship with God, he went from a place of self-centeredness to total yieldedness to God's commands. And even though it took a while, and he had some bumps along the way, God never gave up on him. He stuck with him through good times and bad. And because of this, we see the beginning of the great project to redeem mankind and restore all of humanity to relationship with God. Because Abraham's seed would eventually become the nation of Israel, out of which would come our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am grateful that Father Abraham has many sons and that I am one of them and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Tomorrow we'll explore our subject further and see how the man Jesus went on the same faith walk as Abraham did and learned the same lessons and how he wants to take us on the same walk today. As always, if you have any questions or comments, drop me a line. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless.